Isaiah 9 verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when, when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of, of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and, and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I wonder what you think about when you think about the word peace. Maybe you think about peace and quiet. Maybe something that's close to a lot of our hearts at the moment is we think about the absence of war. Maybe you think about the internal conflict that's going on inside of yourself and you long for peace inside yourself. Or maybe you think about the conflict that you experience in the relationships that you have with other people. One common theme of what we think about when we think about that word peace is an absence of something that we do not want to be present. But as we've read in this beautiful passage from Isaiah, as he's prophesying about the coming of the Messiah, he talks about this Prince of Peace. And the word peace there is a Hebrew word called shalom. And you know, shalom, whilst it does mean things like the absence of war, it has a much deeper, richer meaning and connotation that comes from hearing the word shalom. It, it creates feelings of completeness, of permanence, of making something whole, of inner fullness. There was something really profound that Isaiah was saying when he was saying there's going to come a Messiah who will be your Prince of Peace. So why? Why describe Jesus as the Prince of Peace? Why is that so important? Earlier this year in our Origin series, we looked at the fall and the fall being a time in the world after creation where sin entered, where we started to do things wrong. And um, the result that that had was broken relationship. It broke our relationship with God. It broke our relationship with others around us. And it broke our relationship with creation. Jesus, as our Prince of Peace, he brings permanent and complete wholeness, restoring that which was broken because of the fall. He brings restoration to our relationship with God, our relationship with others and relationship with creation. And I want to unpack some of how he restores our relationship with God the Father. So I want us to look at Romans 5 and verses 1 to 2. And it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. It is through Jesus Christ that we get this peace, the peace with God. And remember, peace isn't just the absence of conflict, but it is complete and whole restoration. It is the sense of there is nothing lacking. Jesus enables us to have this relationship with God where there is nothing lacking. We are at complete peace with him instead of at war with him. In Colossians 1, 
um, verses 19 to 20, it says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. There is only one way that we can know true peace here on earth, and it is because of Jesus. And so when Isaiah pulls out this prophecy that Jesus will be our Prince of Peace, what he's saying is Jesus is going to come and he's going to make a way for us to have complete restoration in our relationship with, with God the Father. And that comes because of Jesus' blood on the cross. He came and paid the price for our sin, all the things that we've done wrong in our lives, Jesus came and lived this perfect life and then he died a death on a cross that he didn't deserve, that we deserved and he took our place and became our perfect sacrifice and by doing that he restored our relationship with God the Father and gave us true peace. It is whole, it is complete. And when we put our faith in Jesus, it is permanent. You know, Israel were looking for a different kind of Prince of Peace. They were looking for a different kind of Messiah. They wanted someone that was going to come in and rule the roost, overthrow the government, set them free from foreign occupation that they'd been under for such a long time. And they were looking for this earthly saviour to come. But we know now in hindsight that they were looking for the wrong thing that that wasn't the way Jesus was going to come and save and I wonder how many of us look for our prince of peace in the wrong place I wonder how many of us expect Jesus to take away all our troubles and give us an easy life full of peace and quiet absence of war no inner conflict no conflict with others but Jesus offers us so much more than that. Yes, some of that comes when we walk in relationship with him, but the true peace that we get from Jesus is that he makes our relationship with God whole. There is no separation. There's nothing getting in the way. We have free access to God the Father because of Jesus. And um, There is an advert in New Zealand for an insurance company whom I will not name, free advertising, uh, but they have a series of adverts and this particular one is a gentleman who's standing outside of his property on his deck um, watching a storm before his eyes and it is a storm of all storms. There's trampolines blowing across his garden, there's lightning striking his dog kennel, it is all going off and he is standing there relaxed Cool as a cucumber, singing Born Free. I'm not going to sing it for you, but if you know the ad, I'm sure you're singing away in your head right now. But he hasn't got a care in the world. And the point of the advert is he knows he's covered. Whatever happens, whatever damage the storm does, he's covered. So he doesn't need to stress and he doesn't need to worry. And you know, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And so for this guy, the storm still came. His house still got battered. He still had to endure the storm, but he wasn't worried because he knew he was covered. And you know, Jesus doesn't promise us a trouble-free life. The storm will come. But what he does promise us is that because of his blood, we are covered and we are at peace with God. And so whatever chaos is going on around us, we are secure. Our anchor is secure in the peace, the whole, complete, restored relationship that we have with God the Father. Once we have that peace with God, when we give our life to Jesus and we come under the covering of his blood and we put our faith in him and we have that peace with God, you know, the flow on effect is that we experience peace in other areas of our life. So we experience peace 
in ourselves. In Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's a promise we can stand on. So when you're feeling anxious and you're like you don't have much peace within yourself, you can claim that promise. God, I'm going to give you all of my worries and my anxieties and my troubles and I'm going to claim the peace that you promised me because I am in right relationship with you because of Jesus. And then it flows on in our relationship with others as well. In Colossians 3, verses 13 to 15, it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. We're one body. Under Christ, we're joined together. And so that peace that we experience with God extends to how we interact with those around us. We put love on (laughs) and we express peace and tolerance and patience with each other. And we get to do that in community. I want to read this Isaiah 9 verse 6 verse again to us because it's so incredible that this was written hundreds of years before Jesus was born and yet it tells us exactly who he is and what he came to do. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I wonder if today you've been listening to me and you have never put your faith in Jesus. In his word it says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. And that means that in that moment you have full peace the full and absolute complete meaning of everything that word can contain is yours in that moment. And I wonder if today you've listened and you've thought, man, I believe that that Jesus is someone I want to know and I want to experience that complete peace. And in a moment, I'm going to give you some words. So if you're saying that you believe in your heart, then I'm going to help give you some words to confess with your mouth along with me that Jesus Christ is Lord and you can experience that peace. And there may be some of you listening today who um, feel a bit disillusioned. You know you have peace with God, but life feels so chaotic. You've been looking for Jesus to manifest himself as your Prince of Peace by taking away everything hard in your life. And yet you're still walking the really hard stuff. And I just feel like God wants to call you into the rest that comes with the truth of what his peace is. That despite anything we walk through in life, he is complete and your relationship with him is complete. And so just like the man in that advert for the insurance company, who while the storm is roaring around him, he can stand at peace. So can you. Whatever is going on in your world and in your life, you are at peace with God and you can trust him. He is a good God. And so I want to pray for you if that's you as well. So can we pray together? Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for the depth of the meaning of you coming to be our Prince of Peace. I thank you for the freedom it gives us. Father, I just pray as someone that hasn't, um, for those who haven't put their faith in you, Jesus, I see who you are. I see that you died for me. 
I see that I don't live a perfect life and I need you to, to stand in the gap to make peace between me and God. And Jesus, I believe that you are God. I believe that you gave up the glory of heaven to be born as a baby and to come and to um, live this perfect life and I bow your father to death on a cross for me. You took my death in your place. And Jesus, I say, I believe in you and I give you my life and I wanna follow you and learn what it is to be your disciple. And God, I receive that peace that you promise as Jesus is my Prince of Peace. Thank you that in this moment, I have restored relationship with you. I receive you, Jesus. And for those who feel disillusioned, I just want to lift you up. God, I pray for these people. Would they experience your true peace today that isn't reliant on our circumstances or what we see with our eyes, but comes from our standing in our relationship with Jesus, that we come under his blood shed for us on the cross and we stand at peace with God. We are home, we are called children of God. We have family with one another. We have a place and a home. And God, I pray for these people that feel um, like they have such a lack of peace because of their circumstances. God, would you just by your Holy Spirit reassure them with the rest that comes from knowing this truth but Isaiah prophesied it long before Jesus was born and then he came and fulfilled what it was you called him to do, to come as our saviour and our prince of peace. Amen.